All right. Impact was kind of a tale of two shows this week. Basically, the first half of the show had some stupid stuff, things that didn't make sense, short matches with tons of interference and overbooked finishes with way too much stuff going on, and then the second hour had longer matches, clean finishes with much better pay-per-view hype. So, essentially, it was like hour one was booked by Vince Russo, and hour two was booked by someone competent. And I liked hour two. Hour two had good stuff in it. And it was enough to kind of offset hour one so I could enjoy the show as a whole. And generally, there wasn't anything that really pissed me off this week, except AJ Styles jobbing to Devon, which is just crazy. I mean, yeah, there were outside factors, but there are things you just don't do, and there are certain people that should be protected. And that match just had so much crap going on outside the ring. Really did not like that one at all. I see what they're doing. They're trying to give every guy in the Bound for Glory series some kind of story. With Devon, it's like a Cinderella story, where the guy with the longest odds in the tournament is actually doing really well and keeps pulling out all these surprise victories. And that might work if anyone thought for one second that Devon had a chance in hell of winning this thing, but he doesn't, and everyone knows that. So I really don't see the point. At any rate, they're trying to give each guy a story. That's admirable. The problem is that really just ends up overcomplicating things. You can have a few stories in there, but really... For most of those guys, the story should be, I want to win the Bound for Glory series and get that title shot at our biggest pay-per-view of the year. And that's why I picked Matt Morgan to win this thing, because that was his story. He was the guy who was completely focused on the title and made the tournament seem important because it was important to him. That's what they should be doing with most of these guys. But when you bog it down with the A.J. Daniels stuff and whatever the hell is going on with Pope and Devon, it becomes distracting. And these matches cease to be about the Bound for Glory series and become more about other things. And that's not what you want. You want them to be totally focused on the tournament. But that's not what happens when you book matches like this where Pope comes out to sit with Devon's kids and distracts Devon, and then Daniels comes out to watch the match and distracts AJ, so then everyone is distracted, and then the Bound for Glory series is suddenly the last thing on anybody's mind. I mean, how many angles are you running here? That's not effective booking, it's just a big clusterfuck. Also, I did not think it was possible for these writers to find a feud that I would care less about than Pope vs. Samoa Joe, but they found one. This whole thing with Pope and Devon, I have no earthly clue what it's about, who the face is, who the heel is, or why I should care either way. In other words, classic Russo booking. And the worst part is that the solution to the whole thing is so damn simple that the fact that Devon hasn't thought of it yet makes him look like a complete idiot. If you want the Pope to stay away from your kids, then just stop bringing them to the show! This whole show is ridiculous! Or if you have to bring them to the show, hide them in the crowd somewhere instead of putting them in the same seats front row center where Pope can easily find them every week. Doesn't that make sense? So the show started with another Immortal promo. But I tolerated this because it wasn't too long and Hogan and Bischoff were not there, thank God. So Bully Ray is doing all the talking, which is probably a good thing, and then him and Anderson get into it, and then Fortune comes out. Why the hell did Fortune come out? Stay backstage, you morons! Immortal are fighting amongst each other, showing dissension in the ranks! That's exactly what you want! But then Fortune come out to start this big brawl, giving Immortal a common enemy they can all band together against? You just made Fortune look like idiots! You people are fools! Apparently this was all done to set up a match with Anderson versus Bully Ray at the pay-per-view. So let me get this straight. You have Anderson finally turn full-blown heel and join Immortal after they were trying to get him to join them for months, also, you could have him start to turn against them just a few weeks later? Oh, what a bunch of bull****. Why the hell was this necessary? Anderson was already fighting Immortal. Why did he need to join them for a few weeks if he was just going to end up doing the same thing anyway? Was it because you wanted them to start infighting? 
You know, Anderson didn't have to join them to do that. You already had more than enough egos in there to pull that off. They had a knockouts match with Madison Rain versus Tessmacher. Madison lost in about 90 seconds, so she didn't have enough time to put the audience to sleep. That was good. But this was really the biggest sign that they had too much stuff crammed into the show this week. Mickey James was sitting in on commentary during this match, even though Mickey has nothing to do with either of these women right now. And why was Mickey out there? Because they needed her to be in the arena so she could get into a fight with Winter and Angelina. But that fight was not related to this match at all. It really needed its own segment, because cramming it into this segment was just forced and awkward. Then there was a street fight. Duh. Why are these people having a street fight? I don't know. Typically, you do these matches to take advantage of the no DQ stipulation. And sure, they did that, but why then is the referee trying to stop Mexican America from interfering? Interference is legal in a street fight! This whole show violates everything about my journalistic integrity! Typical Mexican America match. Tons of unnecessary interference. But actually, the match was pretty good despite that. I give props to Bobby Roode for carrying Hernandez so well. Normally Hernandez gets exposed in singles matches. So this was a case where the match managed to rise above the stupid booking, thanks in large part to Bobby Roode. I'm still not looking forward to Mexican America getting a title shot, but this was alright. It was at this point that the show started getting better. Austin Aries and Alex Shelley had a terrific match. Aries, I think, is just note perfect as the top heel in the X Division right now. And the finish here was a great example of Aries being a heel, winning the match in heelish fashion, but still giving us a clean finish. That's great. That's what I want to see more of. So this was solid hype for the triple threat match at the pay-per-view, and that's probably the match I'm looking forward to the most. The only thing is, I don't know who you put over in that one. It's too soon for Kendrick to job, but it's too soon for Aries to job, and Shelley's already jobbed twice in this feud. So I'm not sure what you do here, because either way someone's going to get damaged. Nevertheless, I am looking forward to it. There was a weird segment where they replayed the sting Kurt angle empty arena match and they had Angle and JB do commentary on it. I liked the idea of this, but I don't think it came off as well as it should have. Number one, that match was never as good as people made it out to be. It wasn't bad, but it wasn't amazing either. The Motor City Gen Me empty arena match from last year blew this one away. So it really felt like they were blowing this out of proportion. Number two, it wasn't necessary to replay the entire match. I think it would have been a lot more concise if they just showed highlights and then maybe had the full version as internet exclusive content or something. It was an interesting idea, but I'm not sure it worked entirely. Then they had a tag team main event with Rob Van Dam and Crimson versus Gunner and Steiner, and this was surprisingly good considering Scott Steiner was in it. And the other three guys were on their game, and they managed to cover up the fact that Steiner obviously has nothing left in the tank at this point. And this was a solid match. One of the better main events they've had on this show in a while. Then afterward, they announced Rob Van Dam versus Crimson at the pay-per-view. Okay. I like the sound of that. I expect that'll be really good. But you just announced it on the go-home show? Just like that? No build-up at all? That's a pretty big match. Don't you want to hype that up for a few weeks? That aside, this is another match I'm looking forward to. I just worry that they may have Van Damme and Crimson's win streak here, and that would be a mistake in my opinion. Crimson's starting to get some momentum behind him now, and he's starting to catch on with the crowd. It's too soon to end his streak now. But it's Rob Van Damme, and we all know how he feels about putting people over, especially guys who aren't big stars. I mean, yeah, he jobbed a Crimson at a house show, but that was a house show. This is different. So I'm excited to see this, I just hope they'll do the right thing for business and keep the ball rolling with Crimson, because ending his win streak is going to be a right time, right place thing now. And then they ended the show with the Sting Angle contract signing, and this was good. If Sting was playing it straight, he wasn't trying to be the Joker this week, and that helped a lot. And this segment was perfectly fine hype, and a good way to end the show. I'm just not particularly interested in the match. Now Kurt Angle can make anything seem important, and this was no different. But will it be a great match like he's saying? No. Why? Because Sting's in it. And Sting's got nothing in the ring anymore. But if there's anyone who can pull a good performance out of Sting at this point, it's Kurt Angle. So I don't think this match will be anything remarkable, but I do think Kurt Angle will find a way to at least make it good. And hopefully Angle's gonna win the title here, because this stupid notion of Sting needing to be the world champion to take down Immortal is just dumb. 
It makes no sense at all. Why does Sting need to be the world champion to do that, especially when Angle has the same goals that he has? And how is being the world champion supposed to help Sting take the company back from Immortal? He hasn't done a damn thing to Immortal with the title that he couldn't have done without it. So that's stupid, and with any luck, this will be the end of it. Generally, Impact has had much worse go-home shows than this. All things considered, this wasn't bad. The thing is, I didn't even realize until I saw this show that Hardcore Justice was this Sunday. Which I guess is a pretty big failure on their part in how they hype this thing. I mean, the card looks pretty decent on paper, but there just isn't any buzz for it. I guess everyone's attention is still on CM Punk, unsurprisingly, so Hardcore Justice may go largely unnoticed. It might be a good show, though. So enjoy that, and I'll check in with you guys next week.